Hey kiddos, welcome to this week's review, which is an all skill fraction review, looking at the different skills we've been talking about over the past few weeks. So let's get started. We're start starting off with adding our fractions. As a refresher, when we add or subtract fractions, they have to have the same denominator. So I'm gonna start by multiplying both of these by two. When I do, I have eight out of 10, plus three out of 10. I don't change the denominator. Eight plus three is going to give me 11. I could also write this as one and one-tenth. Over here, I'm subtracting. I have a 12 and a six. If I multiply both of these by two, I end up with seven twelfths and two twelfths. Denominator stays the same. Seven take away two is five. Five twelfths is our answer. Over here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I have two thirds. I can multiply these both by two. When I do that, I have five, six minus four, six. Five minus four is one, six is our final answer. Over here, I got a little bit tricky with you. Perimeter is plus, so two thirds, plus one fourth plus, these two sides are the same on this style of triangle. So we have two thirds plus one fourth plus one fourth. I can make these all into a denominator of 12 by multiplying them by each other. So I have eight over 12 plus three over 12 plus three over 12. 8 and 3 is 11, and 3 is 14 over 12, or 1 and 2 twelfths, or if you're really feeling crazy, 1 and 1 sixth. Down here, we have adding a mixed number. We start with making our denominators the same. I can make them both to 14. Remember, when I do that, my mixed number, the whole number portion, stays exactly the same. So I have 1 and 7 over 14 plus six and eight over 14. Six and one is seven. Seven and eight is 15. I can pull out another whole and I can say that this is the same as eight and one over 14 because this breaks down to one whole and one extra piece. Subtracting mixed numbers. I'm gonna start by making them both match. This would give me nine over 12. Then I look at the top. Do I need to borrow? Yes, I do. My nine becomes an eight. I'm giving it 12 more. This becomes 19. Seven plus 12 is 19. Now I can subtract. 19 minus nine gives me 10 over 12. Eight minus three is five. If I wanted to simplify, I could cut these both in half and get five and five six. Any questions on the first page? Bring them with you to class into the land of multiplying where you can color if it was helpful to you, or you can use the strategies we talked about in class. No denominators, give it one across the top. One times four is four. Across the bottom, eight times one is eight. I can split these by dividing them both by four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. If I wanted to color in, I could see that this is the same as one half. I'm coloring in four out of the eight. Over here, a mystery number times one third is one. Well, in order to have one, the top number and the bottom have to match. So how can I make these both three? I can do it by doing three over one. Three times one is three. One times three is three. Three divided by three is one. Down here, one seventh and two. No denominator, give it one. One times two is two. Seven times one is seven. This is simplest form, two sevenths. Over here, no denominator, give it one. 10 times four is 40. One times five is five. Top number is bigger, give it a shove. It conveniently falls right into our division house. Five goes into 48 times. We have a whole number answer and it is eight. Sam walked three-eighths of a mile every day for a week. 
How far did he walk by the end of the week? Well, we need to think it through. He walked three eighths of a mile every day for a week. A week has seven days. No denominator, give it one. Seven times three is 21. Eight times one is eight. If I take out groups of eight, I can rewrite this as a mixed fraction. So if I'm asking myself, how many groups of eight can I take out? I can take out two because eight times two is 16. That leaves me with five out of eight. Two and five eighths miles is gonna be our final answer. Over here, we're talking about Nancy. Nancy picked 11 pounds of blackberries to make jam. Before she could make any, her husband ate a quarter of them. How many pounds did her husband eat? So she had 11 pounds and he ate a quarter of them. No denominator, give it one. 11 times one is 11. One times four is four. Four goes into 11 two times because four times two is eight. That ends up leaving me with three fourths. He ate two and three fourths pounds. Any questions on page two? Bring them with you to class. All right, loves, living in the land of multiplying again, jumping right in. When we multiply, unless they're missing a denominator, we just get to work. One times one is one. Four times eight is 32. When one is my top number, my numerator, I am already in simplest form because it's a prime number. Two times five is 10. Three times six, 18. If I cut these in half, half of 10 is five. Half of 18 is nine. If you got here, that's your skill. If you got here, that's your stretch. All right, we have a number times a number equals 16 over nine. Now I need to figure out how to make 16 and nine by multiplying the same number. So I'm thinking of doubles facts. Four times four is 16. Three times three is nine. The book has to equal four thirds because it's the same thing. Let's check it. Four thirds times four thirds. Four times four is 16. Three times three is nine. It's a match. Over here, we have scissors. I need to figure out what number times itself, they have to be the same, gives me four. Well, two times two is four and seven times seven is 49. Let's test our theory. Two times two is four, seven times seven is 49. They match. Ivy has three quarters of an apple pie left over. Her brother ate two thirds of the pie. How much pie did he eat? Three fourths times two thirds. Three times two is six, four times three is 12. I'll simplify this by dividing both by six. If you cut them in half, you'd still get there. Just take a little longer. Six divided by six is one. 12 divided by six is two. He ate one half of the leftover pie. In Mrs. Jones's class, four ninths of her students are boys. Of those boys, one third are football players. How many boys are in Mrs. Jones's class and football players? So four ninths times one third, four times one is four, nine times three is 27. Four 27 of her class are boys and football players. Any questions on page three? Bring them with you to class. All right, moving on, living in the land of multiplying. We have whole number and a fraction. We need to make sure that we put them into improper fractions. C method, bottom times the big, add the top. Six times six is 36, add one is 37 over six times two thirds. If I double 37 or 37 times two, that means I get 74 over 18. I can take out four groups of 18, which would be 72, leaving me with two over 18. Or if I'm feeling a little crazy, I could also say four and one ninth if I cut them both in half. Over here, I have one, two, and three sixths, but if I want to put it right into an improper fraction, this is what I do. Each one has six, but how many do I have? Six, 12, 13, 14, 15, times two thirds. And I can check it here. Six times two is 12, plus three is 13. Across the top is 30, across the bottom is 18. 
I can pull out one group. And when I pull out that one group of 18, I'm left with 12 over 18. And if I want to keep simplifying, I could cut that in half and get one and six ninths. And if I want to keep simplifying, I can divide both of those by three and get one and two thirds. If you got here, this is your skill. If you got here, this is your stretch. If you got here, this is Lisinski's lost it. If you got here, that is the mega bonus. One and two thirds is as low as you can go. All right, we're multiplying, but again, we need our improper fractions. So I know that these are thirds and these are halves, but how many do I have? Three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14 times two, four, six, seven. 14 times seven, big multiplication, 98. Three times two is six. How many groups of six can I take out? I can take out a whopping 16. And when I do, that leaves me with two six. So if you got here, this is your skill. If you got here, this is your stretch. If you saw that you could split it one more time, this is your Lozinski's lost at level. C method to get them into improper. Four times two is eight. Eight plus three is 11 fourths. Times seven times one is seven plus five is 12 sevenths. 11 times 12 gives me 132. Seven times four gives me 28. We're not gonna leave it like that. We're gonna divide about our 28. We can take out four holes. Four groups of 28 is 112. That leaves us with 20 over 28. If you got here, this is your skill. If you got here, this is your stretch. But how low can we go? Well, if I cut them both in half, and then if I cut them both in half, I can get all the way down to four and five sevenths. Ashley spends one and three quarters of an hour doing cardio four sevenths days of every week. So four out of seven. How much time does she spend on cardio each week? So we're going to start with our C method. Four times one is four, plus three is seven, times four sevenths. 28 over 28 equals one, All right? She has one hour that she spends. All right, nuggets. A raised garden measures two and 49 feet long by three and six eleventh feet. What is the area? Area equals length times width. So if we put this out, we have two and four ninths and we have three and six elevenths. So we need to do some math magic. Bottom times the big at the top. Nine times two is 18. 18 add four is 22. Three times 11 is 33. 33 add six is 39. We had a double double. You knew it was coming. 858 and 99. If you got here, I am so proud of you. If you did not even try to simplify it, I am okay with that. If you did though, we can pull out eight groups of 99. When we do that, we are left with 66 out of 99, which we can divide both of those by three, would give me 22 over 33, which I can divide both by 11, gives me two thirds. Again, if you got here, I am so impressed. I gave you a really big, tricky question. If you got here, Wow, I want to hear about it. And actually, I'm thinking about this, kiddos. I don't like this question. Let's change this to four days every week. I don't like it. I'm changing it. So this would be four over one. Seven times four is 28. Four times one is four. That looks much better. By the time you see this on your page, it'll already be fixed. But since we're here, 28 divided by four. going to be seven. It's going to be seven. That looks much better. All right. Questions on this page, kiddos. Bring it with you to class. 
divide. We know what to do. Keep, change, flip. Here we go. Keep, change, flip. I want to see your paper being a mess with these. Three times one is three. Six times eight is 48. 48 is not divisible by three. This is simplest form. No denominator, give it one. Keep, change, flip, mark it up. 50 over seven. Seven times seven is 49. So I could take out seven groups with one seven left. Here is your skill. Here is your stretch. No denominator, give it one, but we're gonna keep, change, flip. Five, 12 times nine gives us 108. 108 is not divisible by five, so this is simplest form. No denominator, give it one. Keep, change, flip, make a mess. Seven times 20 is 140, because seven times two is 14, throw the zero on the end. Over one. Don't get tricked. Anything over one is itself 140. Melissa has nine pieces of wood. She wants to divide them into fourths. How many pieces of wood will she have after? Well, she has nine pieces of wood, dividing them into fourths. Keep, change, flip, 36 over one. She will have 36 pieces of wood. Last one. Jordan will use five six of a cup of sugar over a dozen cookies. How much sugar will each cookie get? Dozen is the key word here. Five six divided by a dozen, which is 12. Keep, change, flip. I end up with five over 72. Five does not divide into 72, so this is as low as you can go. Any questions on these, bring them with you to class.